All right, today we're going to be looking at chapter 4.4, which is about graphing a function rule. Um, before we start, let me just discuss a shift in your math XL for those of you who are in the 135 class. Uh, you're going to have to answer a review question before getting to your homework. Uh, this review question is from uh, either interim measure or it could be from something in the first chapter or first quarter or anything that we need to just make sure you revisit it. Um, my best advice is if you see the question and you don't understand it, that you come up and ask for help or get some help from someone the real way, not just have them tell you the answer, because the questions that I'm putting in front of you are questions you're going to see on your final, it's questions you're going to see at the end of the semester, and so you do want to make sure that you at least understand it so those grades uh, or those questions are understood uh, when you get to them. Again, guessing only hurts you. I mean, you do get time to kind of, you know, guess and see what's going on, but if you guess, then you're not really getting anything out of it, so just feel free to bring it up and say, you know, I don't understand what this is saying, and that way I can talk you through it and then hopefully, like I said, give you a chance to um, know what's going on. Plus, uh, in your quizzes now, it is fair game for me to put any question that has been on your homework on there, so those questions are now um, going to be legitimate questions for your quizzes, not your tests, but for your quizzes at the end of the week. So you'll probably have one of those questions this week, so just make sure you know what's going on so you don't have to guess your way through it. Either way, today's lesson's pretty direct, so just make sure to get it in your range of understanding and then after you get that and you finish your homework, which I'm pretty sure you will, be sure to review your past notes. Remember, you can go back to Math XL. You can hit similar question. You can work it out again. It does not affect your grade, but just make sure you get practice so that you are um, preparing for the test, which is coming up next week. So, again, just make sure you're getting everything under control. Um, the essential question is how does this relate to the information we've learned so far? Uh, we've learned how to analyze a set of ordered pairs. And we've learned to make a rule out of those ordered pairs. We've learned to look at the distance, the rate of change, whether it's linear or nonlinear. Um, but we haven't really seen anything. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to work on creating a visual representation of the values. I'll just tell you that because MathXL is not really that type of um, program, I'm going to have to do this somehow or another probably to start the day tomorrow. But you're not actually going to graph the rules today except in your notes but we are going to work on the skills to get it done so again just make sure you get what you need to out of this there are two types of graphs uh, continuous and discrete uh, a continuous graph is typically based in a situation where the independent variable moves at a fluent rate what I mean by that someone's weight does not go from zero pounds to one pound to two pounds it goes from zero and it slowly works its way up to one like it's zero is 0 0.1 0 0.2 and it works its way up and then it doesn't just go from one pound to two pounds it goes from one to 1.0 1.1 1.2 1.3 all the way up to 1.9 and there's a whole bunch of stuff in between the zero one and two uh, on somebody's weight the height's the same thing somebody doesn't go from four foot six straight to four point seven or four feet seven inches it's a you know a range of height in between there where they're this tall and then they kind of grow into the next part again that is continuous a distance also I don't just go from um, five miles away from home to four miles away from home to three to two to one I go five and then as I, as I slowly get closer and closer to it again that is a continuous situation so you are gonna have to know what a continuous graph is again the questions on there will be there for you if you don't understand the question again be sure to ask but continuous it's really more difficult to identify continuous than it is to just say it's not discrete and that's usually how I think about it. I usually think about whether it's a discrete graph and if it's not discrete then it has to be continuous. A discrete graph is based in a situation where the independent variable moves in steps. If we're counting the number of people that walk into our room or walk into the school it doesn't go zero and then 0 0.2 people then 0 0.4 people because that's a portion of a person. The number of people goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And notice there's a whole bunch of numbers in, in between those decimals and, and fractions in there that you won't have. If you're counting how many days it takes to complete a project, you don't go, you know, one day, 1.1 days, 1.2 days, it's one day to finish it, or two days to finish it, or three days to finish, four or five. And these are all step numbers. Again, they're moving in steps. It doesn't move fluently through. It moves from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and so on. So again, when you get to that part, just be sure to ask about it if you don't understand that. It's not a hard topic to understand, but again, when you see your questions, make sure you ask about that because it's an easy enough thing to get. 
and you just have to make sure you take it seriously enough so you don't um, lose those points at the end of the week and on the test and quiz that you're going to be taking. All right, so we are going to be talking about graphing a rule. In order to graph a rule, we need a table of values. Now, if they give us a table of values, we just graph the table of values. But sometimes they don't give us a table of values, so we have to actually make one for ourselves. And afterwards, we simply just have to plot the point. Um, plot the points, sorry. Yeah. Uh, be sure to select the values that make sense. What I mean by that will be uh, explained when I talk about these two examples that we're going to do before we stop for the day. If you have a problem that says the height y of a plant after a certain number of days is represented by the rule y equals 2x plus 4, what does a table of value for, a fun for the ru function rule and the graph of the function look like? First off, this is a rule. That's what we learned to do, but there's no table. Remember, before we had a table, we had to create the rule. Now they give us the table. We have, or sorry, they give us the rule, and we have to create the table. And so we will first off want to put x and y and get about five points. Here's when I say make sure you pick values that make sense. The height of a y is based off a certain number of days. It doesn't make sense to say negative two days because that would be two days before the plant was alive, before the plant was planted. Who cares about that? It doesn't make sense to use negative one as a number. The very most important number to start with is zero because we want to know where it started. So zero would be the best number to start with and then go one, two, three, four. I guess we can go to five. And then again, you just kind of take the x and plug it in the way we were taught, the way we were done before. Take the 0, plug it in. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 makes 4. 2 times 1 makes 2, plus 4 makes 6. 2 times 2 makes 4, plus 4 makes 8. 3 times 2 makes 6, plus 4 makes 10. 4 times 4 makes 8. I'm sorry, 4 times 2 makes 8, plus, uh, plus 4 <laughs> equals 12. 5 times 2 makes 10, plus 4 makes 14. If you notice, this is moving up by 2. That would be our m. And if you notice, this is also your y equals mx plus b. Remember that your m is right there. And that you can use that to kind of figure out what the uh, equation is. This rate of change is attached to x. And so you can kind of use that if you happen to bump into something that uh, gives you answers with the problem, kind of like a multiple choice question. That is your table of values. Again, if you put any negatives in there, it's going to be wrong because negatives really don't make sense. But the key thing there is we've got a set of numbers that actually is, comes from this rule. The next thing we have to do is make sure we graph it. Keep in mind that this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis and that you need to make sure you have enough room for everything. So my x's go 0 through 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my y's go from anywhere from 0 to 14, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And it doesn't have to be a perfect graph for us in this chapter. Now there will be a next chapter when we get into it officially, but for the most part we just need a graphic representation of it. 0, 4. Remember, 0, 4 means do not move sideways. The y goes 4 up. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be your first point. 1, 6 would be over 1. And then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 8 would be over 2. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Somewhere around there. 3, 10 is going to be about here. Just assuming that that's 8, 9, 10, 4, 12. If that's 10, it would be about here. And then 5, 14 would be there. Again, that's up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 8, up 10, up 12, up 14. We know from what we what we learned that since the rate of change is 2 all the way through this linear, but now you can actually see a pretty good idea that this is pretty linear. Now, your, your graphs won't always look like a line when you graph them, which is why if you want to know if it's linear, the best thing to do is look at your table, but that's pretty much it. You just get the graph, put those two parts there, and that, that would be it. So again, it wants to know what the table of values looks like. That's here. It wants to know what the um, graph looks like. That's here. That's all it takes. It's questions on this test that you should not miss, and the only way you miss it is if you don't practice it or you didn't care enough to practice it or ask about it. So. Like I said, these things really aren't that bad. I think the hardest part of what you have to do for Chapter 4 is in uh, Sections 4, 2, and 4, 3, but we'll see what happens. 
Again, profit y on a number of candy cells is represented by the rule 2, y equals 2x minus 5. They want to know what a table of values looks like and what the graph looks like, so we need a table of values to plot the points. But we're talking about candy sales. So if you're talking about profit on candy, again, negative numbers don't make sense. It doesn't make sense to say how much profit do we have if we sold negative 5 uh, pieces of candy. Your base number, your best number to start with, again, is 0 because you want to know what your profit is if you sell none. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And so what we do is we simply, again, plug it in. 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 5 makes negative 5. 1 times 2 is 2. Minus 5 makes negative 3. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 5 makes negative 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 5 makes 1. That's 8 minus 5, which is 3. 10 minus 5, which is 5. Now, if you had an issue with that, again, that's just taking the x and plugging it in. I put it on that last um, assignment to make sure you knew how to get your x's and y's. But again, you can feel free to go ahead and ask about that while I'm at my desk because you do want to make sure you know how to get those numbers or just plug them into your calculator. Again, my x's go from 0 to 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my y's go from negative 5 to positive 5. Again, that's my x-axis, that's my y-axis. 0, negative 5 means don't go left or right, but do go 5 down. 1, negative 3 means go over 1 and down 1, 2, 3. 2, negative 1 means go over 2, down 1. 3, 1 means go over 3 and up 1. 4, 3 means go over 1, 2, 3, 4 and up 3, which I think is about here. And then 5, 5 is somewhere around here. This is what I was talking about when I said that your graph won't look like a line because our grid is not consistent yet. But again, if we want to know if it's linear, the distance between negative 5 and negative 3 is up 2. That's up 2, up 2, up 2, up 2. So that's what I would look at to see if it was linear or not. But that is a graph. It's a cheap sketch of what the function looks like, and that's really what they want you to be able to do. All right. So the final thought, we are going to get a chance to put all this together this week. Um, just be sure to keep reviewing your old notes so you don't forget the information from past lessons. This is a new quarter and you do not want to start off with a bad test because that puts you in a bad spot for a long time, for actually about three weeks before we take another test. So there are a lot of different things. Remember, you've got to know when to use a linear y equals mx plus b. You've got to know how to determine if it's x squared or x to the third. You've got to be able to tell if uh, when do you use the table? You've got to be able to tell what the graph is doing. Positive uh, rate of change, negative rate of change. There's a lot going on. And so as you finish your work, which I'm pretty sure you should be able to finish it pretty quickly for today, uh, go back and make sure you review that work so you are getting better at you know understanding what the question is asking of you quicker. Outside of that, um, MathXL is waiting for you. Good luck.